Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the global population. So if you just Google global population clock, um, this is a great site, Worldometers, and this is the current world population right now. And you can see how it's growing. You know, as we watch it, it's just growing. This is, there's birth today, deaths today. So the growth today will be the births minus deaths. And these are the numbers for this year thus far. So global population, obviously, when you consider the global population growth and you multiply it by the consumption, um, then you get the effect of on the planet. So the effect of, you know, the resource use, the stresses uh, leading to pollution, things like climate change, etc. And this is the topic that people just don't want to discuss. You know, go to a climate change conference, go to a conference on poverty, go to conferences on human rights and all of this, and uh, people just don't want to discuss global population. It's the elephant in all the rooms, and we just can't continue to ignore it forever. So, um, about six months ago, uh, there was a talk at the Club of Rome, Canadian Club of Rome in Ottawa, by Madeline Weld from the Population Institute of Canada, and I'm going to discuss, I'm just going to go over her slides and talk about her, her points and and uh, add my uh, two cents to it as well. I'll just get the lights to improve the contrast. Okay, so let me uh, go slideshow from beginning. Okay, so basically, let me uh, get this. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to talk about human overpopulation. Never the cause of the problem, question mark. Okay, so this was a presentation by Madeline Weld from the Population Institute of Canada. This is their website. Check them out. Great organization. It's to the Canadian Association of the Club of Rome. You'll remember the Club of Rome. Okay, limits to growth, 1972. Warnings to the world. We were going to, you know, we we're running out of resources etc. You know, everything's being accelerated. Um, all of these different limits are being passed and we're basically facing consequences now. So, so let's talk about population here. Um, nobody ever, uh, should be ever, dies of overpopulation, according to Garrett Hardin, 1971. Okay, um, he was writing about this cyclone. So in November 1970, just before Garrett Hardin's work, uh, a cyclone hit East Bengal. And according to Hardin, early dispatches spoke of 15,000 dead, but the estimates escalated to 2 million dead, and then they dropped back to 500,000. Nice round numbers. We'll never know. Okay, people were just washed out to sea by the cyclone. The nameless ones who died left no trace of their existence. Pakistani parents repaired the population loss from this disaster in just 40 days, and the world turns it, its attention to other matters. What, it, what killed those people? What killed those people? The cyclone, newspapers say. One could just as logically say that overpopulation killed them overpopulation and where the people were living. If Pakistan were not so overcrowded, okay, then this wouldn't have happened. No sane man would bring his family to such a place. Ecologically speaking, a delta where those people lived when that cyclone hit belongs to the river and the sea. Man obtrudes there at his peril. Okay, so it's a number of people, it's where they're living, Okay, and they don't have a choice basically to live there, lots of these people. There's abject poverty. Let's come to more recent times, the Pakistan floods of 2010. Okay, if you recall my videos and um, work from a few years ago, I talked about 
the, these Pakistan floods in 2010. So in August of 2010, about 20 million Pakistanis were flooded out of their homes. There'd be unusually heavy monsoon rains, thousands of cases of cholera reported. The population of Pakistan in 1965 was 51 million. In 2010, 180 million. Okay, now, if you remember, at the same time that these Pakistan floods were going on in 2010, there was, a, there, there was basically a dip of the jet stream over Pakistan. So it rained almost every day for close to a month. Three quarters of the country was, was flooded out. Now the ridge of that jet stream was over Moscow. There was heat wave, temperatures well over 30 degrees for almost a month and Russia lost 40% of their grain crop. This put pressure on the prices globally. Prices were very high. This triggered uh, Arab Spring. Okay, so we're all connected here. We're, it, it, there, there's a connection here, and population is a huge stress, stressor. Um, okay, what caused these 20 million Pakistanis to be flooded out of their homes? Unusually heavy monsoon rains. But yeah, not a five, three and a half fold increase in population in 45 years. You know, that 51 million up 3.5 times in 45 years. What, not deforestation, increasing water runoff, stopping infiltration of the, the torrential rains into the ground. Instead, they just run off. Possibly climate change, okay, well, I've argued that, you know, it's climate change, uh, changing the jet stream, Arctic temperature amplification, Arctic's way warmer, jet streams are slowing down wavier, getting stuck, uh, a trough was stuck over Pakistan, a ridge over Moscow, the trough caused this uh, flooding, the ridge over Moscow caused a loss of grain production, which then triggered the Arab Spring. Um, but, you know, climate change, okay, but climate change is really also a population growth problem. It's a consumption problem times population growth problem. So according to Hardin, again, back in 71, every year we list tuberculosis, leprosy, enteric diseases, or animal parasites as the cause of death of millions of people. It's well known that malnutrition is an important antecedent of death in all of these categories and that malnutrition is connected with overpopulation. But overpopulation is not called the cause of death. We cannot bear the thought to evoke overpopulation as the cause of any death. Okay, what about the blackout in North America in 2003? Okay, well, according to Hardin, well before that, so 30, 32 years prior to this blackout, he says, what will we say when the power shuts down some fine summer on our eastern seaboard and several thousand people die of heat prostration? Will we blame the weather or the power companies for not building enough generators or the eco nuts for insisting on pollution controls, right? So this is kind of prescient. Um, luckily, we weren't in a heat wave during this uh, blackout in 2003. So um, I don't think, you know, apart from all the disruption it caused, I don't believe um, it caused um, thousands of people to die of heat prostration. But other than that, this is very prescient. Uh, conflicts around the world. Is there a population component? Well, most conflicts are a fight over resources, you know, whether it be oil or whether it be water or food or um, you know, it, it's, um, or repression. I mean, there's lots of reasons, but too many people on the planet heats up the pot, stirs the pot. Look, look at Syria, population of 5 million in 1960, 3% annual growth rate. So 22 million in 2010, that's a 4.4 fold increase in 50 years. Okay. They had a massive drought from 2006 to 2010. It wiped out the livelihood of people, farmers in rural areas. One and a half million people moved, couldn't farm anymore. They moved to the urban centers. Um, there was, you know, uncomfortable heat, record heat waves, record dryness. 
Um, so these people move to urban centers, low prospects, few jobs, reduced living standards, congestion, ethnic tensions, and the rest is history. Syria broke up into broke into civil war, and uh, you know many people have had to migrate from Syria, and Canada has taken a lot of Syrian immigrants, um, and as well as other countries, and you know we can see that immigration is a huge topic. It's a very very hot topic. Um, especially with what's going on with Trump and the U.S. and countries getting more right-wing governments and just not wanting to take other people from other parts of the world. And if you think that's a problem now, it's a basically, it's just the tip of the iceberg now. With climate change, where I'll do an entire video on migration from climate change. Um, not just humans, but uh, animals and plants. Um, so we're at the tip of the iceberg for this sort of thing. South Sudan, okay, population of 3 million in 1960, 11 million in 2013. 3.7 fold increase in 53 years, 4.1% annual growth rate. That means the population of South Sudan will double every 17 years if this growth rate is maintained. At this rate, population would be 22 million in 2030 and 44 million in 2047. That's from 3 million in 1960. The region Okay, we have the intertropical convergence zone um, and that location changes and it shifts and if you're in that zone you get rain and if that, that um, zone moves out, so as we get climate, as it, climate change accelerates and the equator heats and the Hadley cell widens, um, then that the ITCZ stays further north, it's further from the equator, so we'll have severe drought far worse. Um, in probably in the near to in, in, in the decades ahead. This region has thin dry soils that are already too depleted to prevent famine. We're already getting famine with the existing population. Okay, if the population growth is maintained at these levels, um, this is just a, a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, where are we with respect to population? Well, just Google the world population clock, the worldometer, have a look at it to see where we are today. You know, 7.6 plus billion. Um, this is kind of a, this is, uh, you know, exponential growth, right? Um, these are the actual numbers. And then the red is the projections. You know, where are we gonna be um, in 2050? 9.1 billion? Okay, so this is an interesting plot here of uh, the Earth's land mammals by weight. Okay, so each little square on here is, is um, basically, I think that's supposed, each little square represents a certain tonnage. Okay, so it's a relative that is relative change. So here's humans here, right in the center, right, where we always put ourselves. Here we have the cat, cattle filling this part here. We have sheep and pigs and goats here and horses. So these are, these are humans here in the dark gray, in the light gray, it's our pets and livestock. Wild animals, well, we've got some wild animals left on the planet still, but they're going quickly. Um, there's very few left. This is from a book called The Earth's Biosphere, Evolution, Dynamics and Change also from other sources, xkcd.com. Have a look, they have some very good um, comics, uh, cartoons, um, that are very relevant to today's issues, including this one. Okay, even though the growth rate has gone down, we're still adding more people. How is that possible? Well, in 68, the growth rate was 2.1% per annum. So 2.1% increase every single year back in 68. The fastest ever growth rate, the increment was about 73 million people. Go to 2010, the growth rate is about half. Not quite, 1.2% per annum. But the total number is much higher. So the increment's 81 million people, which is higher. Okay, so the population is still rapidly rising. As long as you have a growth rate on an annual basis, you have exponential growth. I'm gonna continue this discussion in a second video. Thank you for listening.